to the world. Subscribe now to the Hot 97 YouTube channel. It's Ebro in the Morning with Laura Styles and Rosenberg. It's Ebro in the Morning, Laura Styles, no Rosenberg. He's on assignment. He had a whole little taping situation he had to do. I don't know which one of his things. ESPN, WWE, uh, Juan Epstein podcast. I don't know what he's got going on. But what we got going on is my man Gregory Lowe. Pure Coconut Water 100. Have you seen it on the shelves? Uh, it is a black-owned, the first black-owned coconut water, and this is how we kicking off Black History Month. Gregory Lowe, how you doing, sir? I'm good, man. What's up, E? Good, man. Thanks for you, uh, bringing us. Well, first, thanks for giving us product, and second, thanks for coming by the show. Thank you, man. I appreciate it, bro. So, um, saying the first black-owned coconut water sounds... I guess it sounds interesting, but it also seems like... Why isn't this happened already? Should have been done. Should have been but done. But I think the real story is in the beverage business as a whole, correct? Yes, the CPG business, man. It's, uh, what is this, White Wednesdays? Whiteness Wednesdays. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> CPG <laughs> business is pretty white, you know. Um, not and it, now, people. is that because I, I'm sure there's other black-owned beverages, correct? Like, we've seen them. Well, we've seen other black-owned beverages. I mean, you got Ernest, uh, Uncle Ernest, the liquor business. Mm -hmm. You have uh, Partake, which is the cookie company. But when you talk about mainstream distribution, like Walmarts, Targets, Publix, it's not many beverages in that space. But Are there any other black-owned beverages in the mainstream distribution channel? Space? You know, to be honest with you guys, I can't really say that I know one right now besides... Uh, uh, what's the uh, the chip company? Rap Snacks. They have a juice out. Got it. That they do pretty well with, uh, but not many beverages, man. And what is the before we get into your story? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just so that you know, people know because what is the amount of money in the kind of beverage business as a whole, like in canned good? I, I don't yeah. know what you would call. So this. if I would say, let's start with coconut water alone, right? Okay, three point six billion. Three point six billion. Billion. So, which means that and when growing. you enter the game with yeah. one hundred pure coconut water, yeah. you're looking to carve off. I'm carving 5%, off. Yeah, or five, maybe even a little bit more. You know, but yeah, about five percent, something. But like that. but I'm just saying the financial projections going into this game when you make an investment like this. Yes. You're like, if I can just get a slice of this revenue. If I can just get a slice of the pie, it's pretty big. But right. I mean, you saw what happened with uh, Celsius and. And Flow Rider, I mean, well, they end up having to pay him eighty-two million. I know, but they do what four hundred million a year, five hundred million a year. So you talk about massive revenue, right. In a channel of CPG beverage RTD production, it's a huge market. What's RTD stand for? Ready to drink. So to drink. you know, we have three different versions. So our pure is uh, just pure coconut water, one ingredient, but we also have a tequila version, so it's plus tequila. We have a CBD version, which is plus CBD. Oh, wow. So you can find a plus CBD on vitaminshop.com, but the pure is carried around the country. So, And you're in these places, Publix? Publix, Walmart, HEB down south. Um, we're about to launch in New York, actually. Shout out to Manhattan Beer. We're excited about the partnership with them. So, nice. So yeah. where did the uh, coconut water passion come from? Oh, man, it's crazy. Um, I actually was uh, having my first child, my son, Uh Four years old, little Greg. Shout out to him. <laughs> but um, we were worried about lactation, you know, because breastfeeding is really, really difficult. You yeah. Know? So her doctor told her, "You got to drink coconut water, heavy." And um, I, I hate coconut water, so I knew you whatever. personally. I personally hate coconut water. It's like the taste is bitter. So I said, if I have to drink it, then I'm gonna have to, you know, get into it. So I was actually out in Singapore at the time, and I was jet lagged. And uh, found this coconut in Vietnam that was sweeter than other coconuts. So mm. I flew out there, and the rest is history. It's so funny because coconuts are so different, right? Well, well, hang on, because that was the piece I was thinking. I was like, I didn't know that coconuts. I mean, of course, now that you say it, yeah, yeah. If a coconut growing in I don't know, Jamaica versus mm -hmm. growing in Vietnam, of course, it's, it's going to be different. different taste. But you don't really think. Of the versions of coconuts or the taste of coconuts, right? right you don't. And so I've had coconuts that are really tasty, and I've mm -hmm. had some that are really bitter. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this one. Have you had this one, Sean? I have, and it's great. I, I drink it every morning. Thanks for, as he said, Thanks. the supply that you've given. But, and I've tasted tons of coconut waters. They yeah. don't all taste the same. They A lot don't. of them have all these additives and other things. And I like a genuine coconut straight from the coconut. And this actually tastes just like it. Yeah, it's so the I'm species, somewhat of a connoisseur too. It's the young, your youngness of the coconut, you know. Because right. like most coconuts, you see them brown. Our coconuts aren't brown, they're green, right? Because mm. that's the mm -hmm. young 
sweet coconut. So it's just about you got to do your research, right? Mm-hmm. But where we're bringing it from, you know, there's not many of this like vascosity as a, the right word I'm saying, of taste. Uh, we call it the Brex level. That's the sweetness of the coconut as it ages. Mm-hmm. So um, ours is a little bit sweeter than everyone else. Oh, yeah. well, it's phenomenal. Uh, one now, why did you go with 100? Man, as a uh, title. You know, it's about the culture, man. So, I'm, my, you know, my background is tech. I started in music, uh, built a couple of mobile apps. Song Booth was a big one. And um, and we, I was always... Song Booth? Song Booth, What's yeah. What's that? It's a video music app. We end up um, uh, get, selling it, but uh, basically it was the first video music-based app. So think TikTok, but way back. We launched it with Apple, actually. Got so it. So you can watch the podcast. But just off the, the culture alone, I was just like, you know, keep it real. Keep it 100, right? Right. Something honest and real, like you said, the mm-hmm. coconut straight from the fruit, you know, yeah. but we wanted to tell the story about authenticity as well through this brand. So that's where it comes from, man. The vernacular. Keep 100, it 100. Keep it 100. 100. Yeah. So how do you preserve the... Um the freshness of it, like what it's the can, man. It's the king. Yeah, it's the vessel. You know, that's why when you said I pour it into, I was like, I, I was about keep to the tell can. you keep it in the can because once the can is cold, it's gonna stay cold throughout your entire, mm-hmm. you know, experience. But then again, the can itself. When you hear that pop, let me see. Mm-hmm. You hear that? That's like fresh, right? That's like that's farm to table as you can get because mm-hmm. it's sealed up in there where most coconut water is in a tetra pack or you one use plastics. That tetra pack gets air in there on the travel and mold grows in there. I hate to talk about right, some right. of the other ones, but you know it's bad. right. But it's real. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, real yeah. stuff. So, but when you get ours, you're getting the the freshest coconut you can get. So wow. this got put on my radar for the audience because I hadn't tasted it. And I met Greg, and he was like, look, I, I'm, I'm the first black-owned coconut water. And I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, you ain't know. Like, hey, all right, cool. <laughs> um, you know, I'm a support. And then he sent it, and it tastes phenomenal. Mm-hmm. So I didn't expect that. Like, yeah. I like coconut water, yeah. like, and I appreciate the, the value that it has. Right? So even if I have a not-so-good taste in coconut water, yeah. I still know... That's Hopefully that's the hydration and the, how good it is for you, right? Yeah. And that's kind of why you're doing it is to is to hydrate your body deeply, right? Yeah, it's, you know, I grew up drinking Kool-Aid, man, with all the sugar in it, like you know, rigs where you just dump sugar in it. It's unhealthy for us, man. So when, you know, the whole idea of coconut water came to mind, I started doing my research and... You know, you can put coconut water in your veins as an IV, you know. I did not know uh, that. President JFK, uh, there's a story, if you read about it, he had a coconut hut sitting on his desk till he died, you know, uh, unfortunately. But because he survived off coconut water the entire time he was stuck on an island as a POW. So, you wow. know, these are stories that I kind of researched and just was like, damn, like coconut water is, I'm sorry, coconut water is crazy. Like, um, yeah. so, you know, going into it, I was just like, what if I could bring that to my culture you know like instead of drinking kool-aid all the time what if our kids like my son he grows up on this i want to drink cocoa daddy i want to drink and it's sweeter but it's also giving him the hydration that he needs and i'm like let's start there like where could the obesity rate in our in our culture in our world hispanics african americans minority period it could go like it could just drop extremely right. just drinking coconut water. Um, and, and once again, uh, this is uh, Pure Coconut Water 100. This is Gregory Lowe, the owner. Yes, 100 And coconuts. so now we got to get to the money side yes, of this because yes, I'm yes. sure uh, you as a, a black entrepreneur, you said you started in tech and you sold an app. Yes. Um, yes. If you don't mind us counting your, your bank account, <laughs> um, you, you participated in Song Booth was the Song name Booth, of it. Song Booth, yeah. And you sold, the company sold for how much money if you... Well, I, I can't disclose just because it was kind of a private deal. Got but okay. at the same time, they utilized the back-end technology of it. Um, we sold that one. Um, you know, I've been in the clothing business. I had a clothing company called Fitbox with um, this uh, Rebecca Minkoff, a designer. Um, but tech was my background. Um, just building mobile apps was experience for me. I built for Beyonce. I got a chance to build with Def Jam. So that really, like, broke me into, you know, just the experience of entrepreneurship as a whole. Um Money-wise, um, you know, not to count ducats or anything, but, you know, it's a lucrative business to be in tech and to be in beverage, but there's not a lot of money. So did you space. did you make hundreds of millions, can you say? I wouldn't say hundreds of millions. I but you made a few million. <laughs> we made some money. Yeah, we got, some, we got good. And is that the money that enabled this to happen? It did. It did. You know, I started it with my own money, and I went out there and I said, you know what, I'm just going to build this business. And, you know, 
uh, credit to my family because I wasn't going to do it. Tech was a huge part of my life. Imagine, you know, I was launching an app with Michael Strahan. Shout out to him. Just got his star. Um, and he's also... Oh, shout out to Stray. I heard you yeah. got a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Yes, thing. yes, he did. Yeah. And he's also an uh, investor in my business. And I was talking with him and I was like, yo, what you think? He's like, bring it to market, man. Bring it to market. And um, so we brought it to market and I, I just took a, a bet. I bet on myself, to be honest with you, man. And, you know, a lot of people say you couldn't do it, but I think now we're... We're here, a few thousand stores across the country. You know, we saturate, you know, each market pretty heavily. Um, and now we're about to launch in the UK. Uh, shout out to Waitrose and, and uh, the UK out there. But, you know, just excited about where we can take this brand as a whole and tell authentic stories through this brand, you know, similar to what Pepsi and, and Coke and those guys have been able to do. And now, so I, I hear that being in the beverage business is not lucrative until... One of the big boy, you know, Coming Pepsi, you. is it Frito-Lay, Pepsi? Yeah, you or got Ray Constellation Ray? brands. You got a lot of exit opportunities out there. Coca-Cola could buy you, yes, Pepsi, Pepsi could buy you one of these brands. Yeah. So is that true that, like, right now you're burning through your own money to keep this going? Well, you and the investors to try to... I wouldn't say that that's fully true, right? It depends on your margins. We have really good margins. We're like 61% margins. If you have really low margins, then yeah, it's going to be hard for you because you got to get on shelf, you got to pay for shelf space, et cetera. But um, we've been lucky, to be honest with you, because we've been able to, obviously, we're still burning because we're growing heavily um, across the country. So we got to bring product, all that type of stuff. But um, as far as innovation, you have to spend on that. But as far as like money in, money out, um, you know, we can probably break even by next year, which I'm wow. excited about. That's amazing. Um, now, uh, exit opportunity, obviously, that takes you into, you know, massive proportions um, and, you know, uh, some some dividends, but it just depends, you know. So it, each business is different because even Celsius, they haven't sold, but they, you know. They're making a lot of money. a lot of money. Um, how long have you been in this business now? It's three years, man. Going on three years. Going on, yeah, going on three. Yeah, yeah. And you're in, you said thousands of stores now. Yeah, we're in thousands of stores across the country. I would say exactly probably about around like 15, something like that. 15,000. Yeah. And then we're about to go into uh, Manhattan Beer across New York and in the tri-state area, um, Georgia is heavy for us, California, Florida. Yeah, so we got some so, states. With, um, you know, over the past few years, there's been like infused waters, vitamin waters, and then there's been all these energy drinks, Red Bulls and all of this stuff. Where does coconut water now? Because it seems like it's been a trend. Now you see so many different varieties of coconut water. How do you figure you're going to show the benefits and yep. difference with coconut water? Yeah. Uh, does it merge with the energy drinks to people? Like, Because now you have to educate the public a little bit, no? Well, you know, I, I, I'd say to that, the public has really been educated through the Vitas and the Zikos of the world that coconut water is good for you. You spoke about it, Ebro. So mm -hmm. we're not necessarily trying to educate you about the health benefits of it because you kind of uh, uh, distinctly know that. It's Those who want to know you. will know. Yeah, we're, we're trying to educate you about the message behind the brand, right? This is a lifestyle company. So how do we turn people into coconut water drinkers who aren't coconut water drinkers? That's what we're looking into. Right. That's the biggest space for and, and that's kind of, I guess, what I was getting at. How, yeah. how do you turn people or convert people who are unaware? Right. I know I'm from the Caribbean. Yep. So coconut water is life. That's yep. what it was. Yep. There's also like a big wave, I've noticed, of mixologists that are co incorporate coconut water now in cocktails just because it's like gives you less of a hangover. You know what yeah. I mean? You're like alcohol will dehydrate you. Most definitely. So when you incorporate coconut water in cocktails, it kind of balances it out. It does. Like the tequila product, I mean, it's, it's going to be across Manhattan here with Manhattan beer. And uh, we're excited about it. I mean, it's delicious. And then it also gives you a little buzz. But then you right. don't get that hangover, right? Right, right, right. And um, we're putting together hydration kits. There's so many different things that we're trying to do to bring people in. Obviously, all of them won't work. But um, the message is really the most important thing, right? Keep it real. Keep it 100 Let's tell authentic stories about, you know, minorities in our space, authentic stories about people in the world, period. Mm -hmm. um, and that's how we, you know, get the message out there. And if you want to try our product and, and taste and trial, then come on aboard. You know, you can find us on Amazon. So cool. It's yo, really good. Yeah, yo, it's fire. Uh, Gregory Lowe, thank you for your time today. Thank and you. uh, happy Black History Month. You're making Black that, History e. out here. Yeah. Yo, he's going to make it to Shawnee Coach's Black Fact. He will. He will. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm going to salute you during the month of February. So thank it's like, you, it, can it be uh, Shawnee Coach's Black Fact? Black Fact brought to you by? We could do that. 100 yeah, Coconuts. just rocking every day. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, like, you said you're drinking it every day. Yeah. I'm with it. I'm with it. 
to my I'll G. pop a top right before I start. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yo, Big man, respect. congratulations. Thank Congrats, you, guys. Man, very cool. uh, and uh, thanks for supporting our show, too. Thank, of course, man. I listened to you. I was listening this morning. I was dying about some big <laughs> jokes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, man. Yeah, like we that. try to have fun up here. You know, uh, we try to be more about talking ish to each other than just about general gossip and toxicity. But, yep. you know, we get into it sometimes, but we just trying to have a good time. You know, I mean, look, I think, you know, you've done such a great job, Ebro. I wanted to ask you about somebody, though. Uh-oh, interview has uh -oh. turned on me. Here we go. Count oh, Mixela. Yes, that's my man. Keep it 100. Tell me about him. Yo, Count Mixela was my man. That's my guy. Yeah. Uh, when I was, he was the high, our high school DJ. <laughs> Remember I told you the dude that used to dress up in the... Uh, Dracula outfit named oh, Count yeah, Mixler. Yeah, 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 yeah. Count Mixler. So when I was like middle school, he's older than me. He was in high school. He was DJing. He actually played NWA on the like little the campus where we went to high school had a radio station mm -hmm. in the late 80s, 90s. I think it's still there. I never worked at it. But he did, and he played, I think what he played like Boys in the Hood, NWA. And it was like a big deal because he told like, you know, us all we was like, oh, we about to play NWA on the radio. <laughs> right. He got suspended. <laughs> What? Yeah, because you know, it's the school radio yeah. station. It's oh like God. 80, right. this had to be like 89. Were they cursing it? Was it I, I think, I don't know if it was cursing or just the topicality altogether, because I don't think they made radio versions back then. Yeah. So it might have been cursing. And I don't think we had digital editing equipment to edit something that we had on right. vinyl. Right. So he definitely played the cursing. Right. So what's the relation? I don't know. I was just, I wanted to know about him. I read you about him. him. No, I don't know him. I was just saying, look, keep it 100 with me. Tell me about oh, Cal Oh, yeah, Mixler. yeah. No, that was him. That's my guy. He, <laughs> yeah. He's still DJing. Look, you can look him up. So he's, I think he's still DJing like in Texas. I heard somewhere. he was your inspiration to get started. So I was just like, I, I don't know about, about that. About okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he really wanted to know. I don't know about that. But that's my guy. Okay. We work together. And I actually end up hiring him later on when I was programming a radio station. He worked, we, we worked together a lot. Okay. That's my guy right there, for sure. That's shout up, to, shout to my man Mix a little Thank man, you, man. Thanks you for telling me about that story. Yeah, no, he's on. I, man, I follow him on Instagram, too. I got to follow him on Instagram. Follow yeah. us on Instagram, at 100 Coconuts. So wait, you know Mix a little? I have never met him. I have never met him. I wanted to there ask him. There he is right there. Him. Let's see what he's promoting. Let's see, he's at the Waffle House for some reason. I don't know why. Oh, my God. I don't know why he's at the Waffle House. Uh, let's see. Um, got his Kaepernick on at okay. a Texans game. Representing. You know what I'm saying? That's back in 2022. So, yeah, mix it wherever you are, man. Love you, bro. Love. I got to follow him on the gram and see what's going on. That's what's up, man. It's good to hear about stories from people past, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I got a lot, man. I got a lot. Well, we appreciate you coming by Thank the show, you. man. So we um, do we get 100 coconut water? Yes. Uh, just because? Just now? because, man. You know, every day. You guys got a fridge up Because you know that's why we did here. the interview. Because yeah. yeah. we was going to jam you up for free coconut water. I got so does the shipments just keep showing up? Hey, man, Sabrina out here somewhere. Let's we need to be on a list. Yeah. Cases. Yeah. Yeah. I've been going yeah. in. Hey. Go one a day. Yeah. You know every, every week, we got you. All right, Y'all, we got you on tape, too. Yo, thanks for coming by, man. Yes, and congrats again.